My name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Today is Sunday, October the 10th and it is a grey overcast day with threats of snow. Snow today, snow overnight, ugh. We're getting, yeah, for all those people who are really excited it's fall. That's not so much me. Give me summer, give me sunshine. Uh, so it's clearly sweater weather for me, um, and unfortunately with it being a grey day, this is not, it's not bad today. I have had the heater going, I've turned it off so that, you know, <laughs> we don't have ongoing constant background noise. And as usual, um, full kudos to my neighbour next door, she's got two young kids, and um, it's been quite blustery today as well, but man those kids were out this afternoon again as usual I was setting up and I just go if they're if they're out and they're yelling and uh, as they're playing that's just gonna happen because full kudos to her for getting them out of the house because <laughs> I was looking outside going I don't want to be out of the house anyway uh, it sounds like they've gone back in but uh, yeah I honestly was like going good for her and they were out and they were having a great time so again I think that's just awesome uh, so with it being Sunday, October the 10th up here in Canada, this is our Thanksgiving long weekend. Uh, so to those of you who are celebrating Thanksgiving with us, uh, happy Thanksgiving to you. Um, I certainly know when my, uh, uh, brother was living down in the States, he and his, uh, Canadian expats, uh, would actually still celebrate Canadian Thanksgiving together. Uh, so they would, uh. A bunch of them would always get together on the Canadian Thanksgiving weekend and celebrate Thanksgiving. They also celebrated American Thanksgiving, but they certainly continued the tradition of celebrating Canadian Thanksgiving as well. Uh, so yeah, so happy Thanksgiving to those of you that are celebrating Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to those of you who aren't celebrating Thanksgiving, because it's always good to be thankful. Uh, find something to be thankful every day. Um, uh, up here in Canada, uh, I find that people celebrate Thanksgiving on a variety of days. Uh, my family is uh, uh, uber traditional on that perspective. Thanksgiving Day is technically Monday, and so that is the day that we uh, celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, we are having a family dinner. It's going to be very, very small. It's really just going to be myself and my younger brother and my parents. That's it. Um, Again, uh, my mother has some uh, health complications, not, not terrible, disastrous ones, but in, that put her um, in a category of vulnerable, that if she were to get COVID, her doctor's been very clear about what the expected outcome of that would be. So she, um, with the case, case numbers where they are, we're here in Alberta, we're all being very careful. So we are having a very small Thanksgiving dinner. We're certainly not having uh, the extended family um, so it's unfortunate, uh, but it is what it needs to be uh, again this year. So um, it will be a very small family gathering, but we're still going to get to have turkey and stuffing and all that kind of good stuff. So that's all very positive. Um, yeah, and so with that, now that we've covered weather and celebratory things, uh, this is a channel about cross-stitching. Uh, and the stitching that I've accomplished this week. So just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the comments that came in uh, last week because the question that I posed to you all was should I do a key for my temperature tree and unanimously it has come in that everybody thinks that I should do that. So that's great. So of course here's part two. Okay now that everybody thinks that I should do one, has anybody seen one? Do I have to make it up all by myself? Anyway, if you've seen any concepts of ones, uh, please feel free to put that in the comments down below so I can go have a look at them. Otherwise, I do think it's good. The more that I've thought about it, that um, and I did like the comment that came in that said, you know, it's all very well and good right now because I can look at things and because I'm actively working on it and I know what those colors mean and I'm actively looking at the temperatures. And so I know what, you know, I know the colds of the month and I know the hots of the month and all that good stuff. But five years from now, yeah, pretty good chance I'm not going to know what those are right off the top of my head. 
So I think that's, I think it's a, yes, I agree with all of you. I think I need to put it on there so that five years from now I've got a shot at remembering it. I probably also, because um, my intention is to have, is to put this in those frames that I showed before, um, is to actually very explicitly print out the data points for it and post those on the back as well, just for fun. And somebody else, I think it was Charlotte, that made the comment um, that, uh, so clearly I was going to put the year on, we've now, everybody's voted, and we are all in agreement that I should put the, uh, the grid of the temperatures at the bottom. Well, okay, nobody said where I should put it. I'm saying at the bottom, and I think it was Charlotte that came and said you should probably also put your location. That's probably a good one as well, so I'll have to, I'll have to do something with that. <laughs> As well we'll see how that one works out um, uh, I did get a question I forgot to write down the name of who it was they want had a quick question about how I dealt with beads um, you know they're working on I think it's Mirabilia Elizabeth and they're getting to that point in time where they're done all the stitching and they are getting ready to to work on the beads and how do I deal with it when I'm working on a scroll rod and so, uh, not it's fairly simple for me. Couple of cautionary notes. Uh, number one is for the treasures. I absolutely do not put the treasures on until it is off the scroll rods. Those are too big for me. And again, this is just my personal perspective and this is what I do. I don't put the treasures on until the very end and it's off the scroll rods because I think they're too bulky and when you're winding them around scroll rods, they're going to occur at weird things and it's going to distort fabric and all sorts of things. So um, none of the, I put the treasures on very, very last and I do it while it's off the scroll rod. So it makes it a little, depending on the size of the piece, it makes it a little more unwieldy. But for me, treasures are just, that's, that's too far. The beads I will put on while they are on a scroll rod. Um, but what I do is I take batting and again depending on how I'm feeling about how it's uh, winding around the scroll rod I will either use one or two pieces of batting and just sort of as I'm rolling up put them in there. Um, number three is when I am tightening the scroll rod the level of tension that you may be used to that you enjoy while you're stitching um, I also don't tighten my scroll rods as tight as I would normally do when I am doing the cross stitching part of it again because the beads are in there and I don't want to put the tension that extra amount of tension when I've got all of these potential weird beads wherever they are because um, they're usually not necessarily in nice solid linear lines regularly placed they're usually sporadic um, so I just don't tighten my scroll rods as tight as I would when I'm cross stitching um, just just to give it a little more give when you're working on it um, again um, so that's that's my approach to it um, clearly when I was working on the Mill Hill kit because it it conveniently fit in a scroll rod um, you know it conveniently fit in the scroll rod and I have to didn't have to do much fussing about that I have done uh, ones where uh, it has fit onto a Q snap, but I've sort I've started at um, at the top and worked my way down or bottom and worked my way up to the top, depending on on what worked out best from the beading perspective. But it fit. It was wide. It the width was less than the Q snap, and then usually um, either the top or the bottom was one that was not tightened. So it would be tight on three sides just not the fourth Q snap because that's sort of where the beads were then falling. So that's another option. Again, with Elizabeth, I'm thinking that it's a, f my recollection is that's a fairly large mirror because it is a Mirabilia. In my head, I'm going fits on an 18 by 27, but don't quote me on that one. You know, again, um, depending on where the bead placement is, like you could even do things potentially like take it off of the scroll rod um, there tends to be heavy beading in the hair sometimes and again so I haven't specifically pulled Elizabeth out to look at her but I'm going like 
more probably in the head, maybe some heavy beading at the bottom of the dress as well as in the dress. So again, you could do ones, you know, depending on what your comfortability level is, right? You could take it off completely and just sort of um, cue snap around the head and do all the beading there. Um, and then sort of deal with the beads at the bottom, but you, you will know that pattern far better than I will, <coughs> although I, it is in my stash. Um, again, it's your level of comfortability. You could start up, you could start on the scroll rod and sort of go, I'm comfortable with this, or you could start on it and go like, I'm not good with how this is coming, even with the batting. And that means, um, probably just taking it off the scroll rod and working it in hand. Again, everybody does it differently and it may be trial and error to find out what version of that works best for you. Hope that helps. Let us know how, let us know how it's going. <laughs> We'd love to see how it looks. All right. So those are pretty much the summary of comments from last week. So what have I been stitching on this week? Well, we're going to start off with the one that everybody is familiar with, the infamous temperature tree. It was, uh, okay, and it is a gray day here, so the ring light is out and all that kind of stuff, so we're going to get a little more glare than we normally do. Temperature Tree by the Stitchin' Mommy. Coming along, coming along with a story to tell. So here's where I'm at now. Okay, don't take it the wrong way. I love how this looks. I love how my tree is coming along. Okay. Um, as noted last week, I had said that there were about 25 stitches up here at the top, which were not complete in my June branch. And I was working on branches with my second skein of my tree trunk color. And it really, it looked like it was one shade lighter. And then I went into my glorious stash and discovered I didn't have any more. So now I need to take this and go and get another skein and quite frankly given that I've used up an entire skein coming through and doing tree branches up to June which does not include filling in the trunk and going tree branches through to December is skein number two I think I actually need to pick up two more skeins which is also note to self because I'm planning on doing another one of these trees in a, in a few years not right away but in another few years I'm doing this again so uh, note to self, for me, I'm finding that it's taking uh, three skeins of the color um, that I'm using for the uh, tree trunk. So I need to go out and, and take this with me because I need to make sure <laughs> when I pick up more, it actually does look like the stuff that I've already stitched. Otherwise, you know, we're into interesting territory of what do I do with that if I can't find ones that actually go like it'd be weird it'd be interesting if the first skein I used was the one that was the off color we'll solve that problem let's all hope it's not the off color it's just some weird thing that's going on with the skeins that I happen to have in my stash anyway skeins skein I only had one more anyway so uh true to form here we come through I don't think the colors are showing up as uh, the same way they are in real life. Um, so just, so here's the darkest of the reds that I have used. There is one more red that is even darker than that, which should be coming up in the July branch. Um, so this is, um, 36, this is 36 plus 36 degrees Celsius. Now I made this comment that I also found that this was the new color that was on the May branch. This is the hottest day over here at 27 degrees, a little above 27. I also thought it was interesting that the very first branch, very first leaf on the June branch was that same color. Anyway, so as you can see, it's getting redder because it was warm this summer. Uh, but in terms of overall effect, um, yeah, I love I love how this is coming and for that friend of mine who was commenting going I'm sorry you have orange and yellow I'm fine with it in this piece because I acknowledge that there are orange and yellow leaves in real life so uh, less so much the purples and the blues but you know in some unique varieties of plants you can get those colors so, I don't know that I've seen the aquas but that's not the point so I love how this is coming my big 
uh, problem that I need to solve this week is to go out and find an, two more skeins that actually match this tree branch so I can keep going. But so far my pace has been uh, pretty good. I would have liked to have spent a little more time on this because then I would have worked on the branch. But anyway, c'est la vie. Um, but yeah, that's my temperature tree so far. Love how this is looking. Love working on it. Love how it's looking. Love how it's coming together. Can't wait to can't wait to see what happens with my July branch. And quite frankly, uh, I wouldn't say that I'm halfway there because the tree trunk needs to be filled in. But if by next week I happen to have my July branch, I will be happy to say that I am at least halfway through this project. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. Happy with how it's coming along. Check back because if I can't find skeins that work, then, you know, then we have a bit of a pickle. All right. And then, of course, we had my October new start. Um, and thank you to those of you to those of you who played along with my um, guessing game. <laughs> right. I, I know that some of you are just like, it's ridiculous. Just tell us what the dumb thing is. I know. It's my own little, you know, personal entertainment. It's the little things in life that surprise me, keep me entertained. I don't know what the deal is, but yes. Uh, so for those of you who totally knew what it was, for those of you, I did have a friend who said she took the two words that I showed last week and just Googled them and went, ah, oh, that's the chart. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes. So I am working on from Carted Cottage Garden samplings. This is their Halloween sampler. This is technically Halloween sampler one. It's not called Halloween sampler one, but they also have Halloween sampler two, which again is just more Halloween related words and different motifs that are varied, but very similar to this. Um, we'll talk about this again, because as you can tell from the title, we're going to talk about cottage, man, I can't say it, cottage garden samplings designs this week. Um, I've made fantastic progress on this, if I do say so myself. Um, the technical called for fabrics for this, um, the model shown here on the cover, was stitched on a 32 count copper penny linen from Wichelt. Um, they do have an alternate fabric option, which is Havana by Weeks Dye Works. Both of those are, of course, more brown than I particularly like. And as you saw from last week, I'm doing it on my very, very bright uh, fabric from uh, Color and Cotton. Sorry, I'm just fixing this corner because it's bugging me. There we go. Okay. So, like I say, I feel like I've made very good progress this week because last week all I had was Magic and Newt. Maybe I had a little bit of a start on this Imitate. But other than that, I have worked my way up to the top. Um, every, All of the words from the center over to the left-hand side are complete. Uh, I've done... Um, most of the words over here to the right other than the first letters. So I need the A for abracadabra. I need uh, the D for Dracula. That's not true. I have a little bit more of the A to go. Uh, this is Dracula and I've done the Halloween. And I'm just looking at my chart going and that's not true. So I also need to do goblins. So a few more words to come over here to the right. Um, what I tend to do because I'm doing um, using a toile in 823 for the first letter of the words, which again, you can barely see any of the sparkle. I will assure you that in real life you can see the sparkle. Um, so a toile for the first letter of each of these words and a regular DMC 823 for the lettering. Now, again, those are not the called for colors. Um, the first letter, the first letter of the word is called for to be gentle arts blackboard. So I did bring out my, the rest of the colors. 
Now, again, part of the thing that drew me to this particular chart, yes, it's Halloween and I'm not te technically an overly large Halloween stitcher, but I really liked that on the chart that those first letters were blue, which for me is atypical for Halloween charts. It tends to have, you know, it was an over dyed, it looks lovely on this front chart. Then, of course, when I went to go get the called for fibers, it of course didn't look, I couldn't find any blackboard that even remotely looked like that. So I don't know whether that happens to be just the version of blackboard that they had. I don't know if that's some version of color enhancing that went on when they were doing, touching up the, the picture that they were using for the cover. My answer is who knows what happened there. Uh, do I have, let's use this. So here's, you know, so here is Gentle Arts Blackboard. And again, it will be hard to see on camera. Let's do that. You know, it's a pretty black, right? So no blue, no variegated blue, no any of that. And I did kind of go like when I first saw it is like, well, maybe this is just this particular version. And as far as I can tell, most of it when I've seen it has been all like this. So again, how how this this cover picture shows it with being a very variegated blue, who, who knows how that arrived. And again, you can never assess a cross stitch pattern by the chart that's show or the picture that's shown on the on the front of the chart. So I do have this. This is this is used for other items. Uh, some of the motifs in the particular sampler. So I do have it there. Uh, so that's the color that is called for for the first letters and then uh, for the first letter of the words and then the color that is called for for the other lettering in the words is Raven, which I do not have and have not been able to locate now, as with most charts, this does uh, come with a DMC conversion, and the conversion for the Raven is a straight up 310. So I've focused on the words, and again, I think I'm making really great progress. Again, I started it on October the 1st, and we are now on October the 10th. I feel like this is great progress this month. Can anybody explain to me where I feel like I can get a lot more stitching done when it's words like this and a lot less stitching done when it's backstitched words like in Tapestry of Life? Can't figure it out. Anyway, but I have not, I've focused on words. I have not done the motifs. Now, upside is in the top part of this, there's not a ton of motifs, but again, I'm planning on making a couple of changes. So the called for color that is used for, I just lost it, here we go, the moon that's up here by the abracadabra and the star and also that plays a part in the candy corn is um, Gentle Arts uh, Orange Marmalade. So I have orange marmalade. This is what my orange marmalade looks like. So it's a little orangey. Again, it's hard to see with the glare. Now I could fussy cut this to get it to be more of the yellow, but I don't feel like doing that. So what I'm planning on doing is um, I'm just going to go rely on the DMC conversion for that particular color, which is DMC 972. Now, here's the other, here's the other really great thing about that. 972 is also a color that is available in the DMC A12 range. Again, I don't have it, so I have to go out and get that this week as well. So yeah, there will be some stash positions for next week, but at least you'll have advanced notices to what they are. So I'm gonna go get the um, A12 version of this um, and I will use the A12 for the moon and I will use the A12 for the star. I'm probably not going to use the, the A12 for 
the candy corn. But that color is also used in the fire that is coming up from the pot. So I'm going to use the A12 there as well. I have also decided that I'm going to use the DMC 310A12 to do the bats, the boot, and the stand of the cauldron over here. So I haven't decided what I'm really going to do about the raven the raven, the crow, to be perfectly honest, I don't know the difference between those two birds, you know, the blackbird. Um, so I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that one. The cat is going to be, um, I think it's called for for blackbird for that. So I probably will use the overdyed for the cat. Um, the eyes are also uh, that orange marmalade. So I'm probably going to use the A12 for that as well. I'm going to use the uh, DMC glow in the dark to do the yep yeah, there it is the ghost and the bone it's terrible I can't see these on the on the screen but hopefully you can I don't know that you can see them either hmm. anyway uh, anyway so a few things that I need to acquire this week so I can uh, continue doing the motifs if I don't get them this week, I'm still fine with that because I have, it's not like I'm done words. There's a lot of words left to go. But uh, in terms of progress, I think I'm making great progress on this. Now, uh, I would like to have this framed when it's done, but I need to find a navy blue frame for it to fit in. And historically, it's actually harder to find navy blue than it is to find black, so... Not that I'm really good about doing fully finished objects anytime soon, but that's the plan for this one. And then this would just get propped up somewhere in the house. Anyway, I think I'm making great progress on this. I'm going to continue working on lettering. Um, I will tell you I've made a mistake in one of the words. It's spelled correctly, but I'm debating whether I'm going to adjust something. I said, you're fine, just keep going, and I keep looking at it, and I think it's throwing me off, so I might have to make one more adjustment, <laughs> make it even more wrong, to make me feel better about it. So check back next week and see what I've done on that one. And But I'm also going to say to you, if you can, if you can spot it, good on you. Uh, I have no problems if somebody tells me I've done it wrong, because I've just said I've done it wrong, and I'm sort of feeling it, like I say. So again, I think I've had great progress this week. Um... Yeah, it's it's coming along really well. Uh, so let's let's see let's see what I get accomplished, and let's see when I get my uh, trip to the store, and see what they've got, um, so that uh, <clears throat> there's a possibility that by next week some of the motifs from the top part might actually be finished. It would be very nice if I could come back and sort of say I'm done to about here. Again, haven't quite decided what I'm doing about my blackbird. That is showing up on this particular chart but so far it's coming along great and I'm really happy with my progress all right with that let's talk about some stash acquisitions so even getting ready for this I was looking for remember I said last week that I had this chart and I couldn't find it I thought it was in here even as of this morning I was like where is that thing? I put it away very, very carefully so I could show you all, but I have located it. So here it comes. Um, so this is the, the one that I'm going to show you. This was a limited edition chart that was released at the Needlework Expo in August. Um, my LNS Traditional Stitches wasn't able to get it. It was limited edition, and so there are lots of shops that would have participated in uh, Needlework Expo that do not have this as part of, the, part of their product line. Again, it was limited edition, not everybody got it, um, but I really wanted it. So I went out and I got it. So I did have to get it from a shop down in the States. Um, so this is, I did check again. Um, certainly the shop that I got it from no longer has it available. So it goes back to, I'm really glad that I ordered it as soon as I did. I Again, I did have to check with a couple of shops because the shipping options coming from the States are getting ridiculously expensive. 
And again, I will, I totally acknowledge that this is not the fault of the shops. I acknowledge that the postal rates are going up like nobody's business. Anyway, we're going to talk about that in a bit as well. But anyway, I ordered it. I had to shop around to get it to a place where I could get it. So this is from Scissor Tails Designs. Wow, the glare on that is just disastrous. It's called Purple Pumpkin, Purple Pumpkin Pin Keeps. Purple pumpkins. You could probably tell from this room that I have a thing about purple. Um, so the chart did come with the purple pumpkin that sits here in, on this particular design. And that was the limited edition part of it. They only had a certain number of those um, pumpkins. And sort of once they were out of those, that was, I, my understanding is that's, that's how many uh, charts they produced. Now, Scissor Tail Designs did do another purple pumpkin chart that was also released at, at the August Needlework Expo. That is not a limited edition. That can be more readily uh, gotten from LNSs or online shops. Um, it's just that this particular one was a limited edition, which is what sent me into the hunt for this chart down in shops down in the States, <laughs> comparing <laughs> shops that had it and what their shipping costs were. Now, while I was there, I totally subscribed to Emily C's um, view that no chart should travel alone. It's just not safe. So safety first, I've said that many times. So that clearly applies also to charts traveling alone. So I ordered another chart from the same shop. Um, I've had my eye on this particular Rovaris um, chart. Um, yes, it comes out like that. Here's where, um, what they are. I love me some good nautical things, which makes no sense because I live somewhere that is completely, utterly landlocked. We are not well known for our waterways, but I love beach and water and boats and all those lovely things. Um, so, and I've had my eye on this chart for a while. They had it in stock. Um, it does, so similar, the, pump, the purple pumpkin one came with its purple pumpkin bead. This one comes with this silver steering wheel charm. So that came as part of the packet um, as well. So those um, were the charts that I got last week that I couldn't find. Um, and then one of, <laughs> these are the things that happen after, like after I've wound up the video and I'm getting ready to get it processing, all that kind of stuff, I move things on the table and I discover the other things that I <laughs> had in the stash acquisition pile that I forgot to show you. Uh, so also part of the fabric, uh, technically that I had last week is this piece of 32 count Lugana. Uh, this is in dark cobblestone. Now this is not normally my color. Um, it's a little browner than I like. I know that looking at it on camera, you'll go, it's just a darker gray. It's certainly got gray tones in real life. It's a brown gray, which is not normally my thing. Um, but I've got a couple of things coming up where I've been debating whether I need to move off off of the gray and move it onto something more like this. Haven't made haven't made final decisions, but I figured since it was available, I should get it and put it into the stash. So again, so that is a piece of 32 count dark cobblestone Lugana from Zweigart. Okay. The other funny thing, because we were talking about Stitch and Mommy and she had some suggestions about um, the Gingerbread Valley charts, those two or those two double-sided ornaments, and that I was potentially going to be using the Etoile. Now, I haven't gone back and checked with her to see whether she's actually used the Etoile. Uh, I saw somebody this week somewhere in social media land um, that had stitched something with the Etoile Blanc. And it did look white. And again, so I have read in the comments somewhere, lots of places where, you know, when you look at the Blanc in the A12, it looks very, very gray. But when you stitch with it, it looks white. Which is going to be important for me when I work on those Gingerbread Valley ornaments. But Stitch and Mommy did say um, she has used this petite silk lame braid. Whew, 
Ooh, look at the glare on that puppy. I don't know how to make it. Anyway, it's it's white silk lame braid from Rainbow Gallery, and she said it's a really nice uh, sparkly white, and she's used it in, she's working on Winter Garden by Chatelaine Designs. Chatelaine Designs are lovely. Anyway, um, and she used it on that, and she said, so if you're looking another option, I've used this, and it looks fantastic, and it's got good, decent sparkle. So I picked some of that up as well. This was also part of last week's um, stitching stuff again when I <laughs> moved certain things around. I went, huh, look at that. Oops, <laughs> missed that one. But again, so Stitching Mommy said she'd use this. It looked good, and I picked it up because you know I believe in have the options available and ready to go because usually when I'm trying to make a decision it's usually like 10 o'clock at night so I need the options there to make my decisions sorry I'm distracted but I'm looking out at the window my poor sweet peas like they're really they've had it it's time to dig those puppies up and put them into the, into the green bin anyway so got those um one of the other things um there is a chart that I am looking at I have I haven't quite up, made up my mind about colorways. It does call for uh, I think it's five different colors of purple. So I did pick up um, now. There's not five in each of these ranges, but I picked up. Where's my piece of stuff? So I did pick up a range uh, of NPI purples. Uh, the range is called the Pansy Purple Range. Oops. Apparently I need to get a grip on that. So that's that color range. The camera is not doing it any justice. Um, but I also picked up sort of a range um, in the Auvers Soie, the Soie d'Alger range as well. It's quite a bit different. I, now, they didn't have all five colors, which, anyway, it's not going to be stitched on imminently, so I've got time to sort it out. But I wanted to bring the color palettes home so I can, you know, lay them out and look at them and debate and look and debate and look and debate. And, you know, a year from now, I'll make a decision. But... I've picked them up. I was originally, I will tell you, I was originally leaning towards this color palette and I, I think I'm moving back over here. I don't know. I gotta think about it. All right. So those are the stash acquisitions for this week. Um, I will tell you, uh, last week, Mama Loves You GB Michelle, she put out quite a few videos which I watched all of them last week <sighs> she's a terrible enabler that woman so I will tell you in um, she did her regular videos and she did this sort of three-part series talking about samplers and I will tell you there was something in part number two where I kind of went Ugh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get that so it was a chart and it was done a very specific way. And so when I found the chart, then there were other things. Now I've done very well. I should have printed out the chart. I did purchase the chart, so I should have brought that, but I'm not. I'm holding that off so I can show you once I can show you the other things that I ordered, which are the called for things to do it on. So I've, I've ordered those and I ordered them from Europe. Anyway, we'll talk about that when it comes. Um, so, yeah, more th more things purchased and ordered. Yes, I've blown stitch from stash yet again. As usual, I am re I'm evaluating what my stance needs to be. The problem is, is I don't necessarily regret my purchases. Part of it has to do with things like you know, like the purple purple pumpkin pin keep, right? Limited edition. If I didn't get it then, I I can't. It's not, I don't know that I can't get it now because I haven't continued to search for it. I know that the store that I bought it from is out. Um, and I know that a couple of the stores that I had been looking at that had it no longer have it. It was limited edition um, and that's why I got it. So 
end game. Do I regret the purchase that I made from Europe? No. No, <laughs> I don't. Because it, anyway, when it comes, you'll see why I don't. Well, you may or may not understand why I don't regret, but the end result is I don't regret making the purchase. Blue stitch from Stash. I, I need to set a goal for next year. We'll talk about that when we get closer to it. <laughs> Haven't figured out the goal, but anyway. Okay, and with that, let's talk about free charts. Okay, so I also laughed after I had finished recording my video last week and it was up and it was processing because I was watching some other videos and um, I enjoyed the fact that um, uh, Mama Loves You GB brought this one up as well. So I talked about this last week. Mama Loves You GB talked about it last week as well. Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching talked about it as well. Who knows who else has brought it up. So I'm going to remind you again, only because, and you're going to hear about this every week until the end of October, only because similar to Pandemic from Long Dog Samplers, there's always people who pipe up at the end and go, I had no idea. And I acknowledge that not everybody can watch every floss tube ever. I feel like I'm about 80 floss tubes behind on a variety of stitchers. Not because I don't want to watch them, but you know, time, things, things get in the way. Um, anyway, so it's going to come, it, you're going to hear about these ones every week through October because I don't want it to be like pandemic. Somebody goes, I had no idea this was available for free. So here it comes again. Stone Street Stitchworks, uh, Francis Sweet Love 1827. And my favorite comment from Mama Loves You GB was, even if you don't think you're ever going to stitch it, download it now while it's free because at some point you're going to need something from out of one of those alphabets. <laughs> and again, right? If I'm going to write in the name of where I live on my temperature tree to go along with here so that, you know, for posterity, I need an alphabet to write out that location. I don't know that it's necessarily going to be from this one, but I haven't made that decision yet, so who knows? And again, so, I'll, and you know my thing, if you see a pattern and you think there's going to be any remote, anything, download it while it's free. So Stone Street Stitchworks, the link to where to get this from the blog is going to be in the notes below. Uh, so you can go get this. It's free until the end of October. Um, and once we get past October, you, if you want it, it my understanding is it will still be available. You'll just have to pay for it, just like Pandemic from Long Dog Samplers. Okay, the other one, because uh, I was bombing along and stumbled across this one, I went, how did I not find out about this before? But um, the this is from Pine Needles Designs. So we talked about Pine Needles uh, back in December because they had an Advent stitch along where this small little square was being made available every day. And if you were very good and you stitched the small square, and it's a small square, totally doable in a day, you know, by Christmas day, you would have this advent calendar all stitched up. They're doing one for Halloween. So here is the first nine days trying to think if I downloaded, I think I already downloaded 10, but this is, I've taken this off of their Facebook page. And again, so you can see the, the squares are very small, very doable. Um, again, part of the thing that I like about the Facebook page is when you get in there, you know, people are changing colors and doing things differently and all that kind of stuff. And again, this is why I don't, actively participate from a stitching perspective up front at the beginning of these things because I need to see what the whole thing looks like in its entirety and I love seeing what people are doing and changes that they're making some of them are really interesting some of them I'm going hmm I might need to copy that but again I can't make those decisions until I see the whole thing so this goes uh I think it goes all the way to the end of October. So whether there's 30 or 31, I don't know about that. I should have looked at the outline. Um, so day one is pretty much the outline of all, oh, that's what it is. Day one is the outline of all the blocks. This is day 10. Um, 
I suppose if I paid attention, I would know if, if there's going to be 30, if there's actually going to be 31 of them. This leads me to believe there's going to be 30 of them. Yeah, that would make sense. Because day, day 31, because day 1 is the outline of the blocks, day 30 will be the last block filled in. Anyway, there we go. I've sorted it out. Anyway, the, similar, um, these are only going to be available for free until the end of October. Um, as of, you know, November the 1st, this will be available as a pattern. You can still get it, but it will be a paid pattern, so you would have to pay for it. So again, and again, do you necessarily want to stitch all of this like this? Who knows? But you may need some, you know, you may not be terribly Halloween-y, but that's not a bad little wreath if you were make it into a scissor fob for a small, for something or whatever. Anyway. You just never know, you know my line, get the chart for free when it's available. The link to the Pine Needles site, and again, so they'll have a different link that you need to click on for each of the days, but I will put the link to the Pine Needles site um, in the notes below. And again, you'll hear about this until every week until the end of October when all of these free charts go away. All right, and with that, let's get into the topic. Uh, so not surprisingly, I do uh, try to do a segment every month uh, that focuses on the designer of the focus piece that I'm working on for that particular month. And of course, given that my focus piece for October is uh, cottage garden samplings, see I did it better that time, um, we're gonna talk about designs from them. So. As I mentioned before, Cottage Garden Samplings has this Halloween sampler, which I'm currently working on, which is the first of their Halloween samplers. They do have Halloween sampler two. They also have Christmas samplers. In this exact same, there are words, um, words for every uh, letter in the alphabet plus select motifs. And there are actually two Christmas samplers as well. I know I'm the queen of Christmas. I can't explain to you. The Christmas ones are okay. I don't own them. I don't own either one or two. There's something about them that's throwing me off. Can't figure it out, but I have the Halloween ones. It makes no sense. Anyway, get the things that you are attracted to because anyway, whatever. Um, but if Halloween isn't your thing, but you like the concept of this, um, there are two Christmas samplers. Uh, by Cottage Garden Samplings as well. And it's called Christmas Sampler and Christmas Sampler 2. Now, uh, one of the other uh, Cottage Garden Samplings charts that I have, because you've just seen it recently in a stash acquisition, is this Have Faith. Now, this is from their series called the Songbirds Garden Series. Um, so there are 12 charts in this series and when it was coming out, there was one coming out every month. Um, it all always for, for just features, wow, words hard, features a bird, hence the songbirds garden, a plant of some kind, and then a word. So whether it's faith, Mary, love, uh, I think gratitude is one of them. Anyway, it's all similar concepts. They are all as essentially the same size. Stylistically, they're very similar. Um, but, you know, there's a pumpkin on one and all sorts of things. Um, so it's, you could stitch them all together. Uh, the way that I've seen them is stitched individually. I've seen them done uh, over two, which is what the model is called for. And um, Jessie Marie was working on one from Jessie Marie Does Stuff. <laughs> she had a moment, she was like, wait, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, does it say... Like on 32, on 32 count, if you were doing it over two linen threads, this this would be about 10 by 10. Um, like I say, I've seen it done over two. I've also seen it done over one. It looks just as fantastic either way. Knowing me, I'm probably gonna do it over two because that's just my preference. And I don't mind having this end up being a 10 by 10 piece. 
I say that now. <laughs> Check back and see what I actually do it on. Anyway, um, the my introduction to cottage garden samplings is actually uh, through a different series. It's an older series, and this series is not talked about very much. So I hauled out all of the charts from this series again because I don't feel like this series is is seen or talked about very much. Uh, I will also say they have a current year series again so there's a chart coming out every month the series for 2021 is called a time for all seasons um, so clearly we are uh, on month 10 so 10 of the charts have come out there's two more these are not limited edition um, if you just search for cottage garden samplings time for all seasons pictures and sites and you know it's it's readily available um, but like I say um, I'm going to show this series because this was my this was my gateway into cottage garden samplings designs and I don't find that it's talked about very often and this is the series that's called my garden journal so this is January's snowdrop and I'm not going to read the words on them because I can't read them backwards and I took this one out of the plastic. I think I'm going to be not so good and not take the rest of the jewel because I didn't do that in advance. Depends on how glary they get. This is called February's Primrose. March's Daffodil. Now these are all very similarly sized. Uh, so the stitch count is 125 wide by 74 high. So on 32 count, it would be eight inches wide by, you know, about four and a half inches high. You know, again, depending over one over two, blah, blah, blah. I haven't gotten far enough in to see whether, you know, doing them over one is, is easily achieved. Um, but to me, the important th the important thing was to get the chart while it was available. Um, I also haven't, um, if you go onto the distributor websites, which I didn't check before I got on to do this, I don't think these are out of print, um, but I'll make a note of that in the show notes. Uh, this is April's Daisy. Uh, May's Lily of the Valley. Uh, June's Honeysuckle. Uh, July's Delphinium. August's Poppy. I love this one. Uh, September's Morning Glory. Uh, October's Marigold. I might even keep the colors on that one. Maybe. Uh, November's Chrysanthemum. And uh, December's Holly. So I really, I really like this series. I, of course, haven't started stitching them. Uh, when did these come out? right on here can't see the copyright to save my life oh, 2013 2013 so you know it's a good nine <laughs> eight eight years old already um, 
But that's, yeah, again, somewhere I stumbled across this series and I hadn't seen it. Like I stumbled across somebody stitching one of them and discovered it was a whole series. And I really liked them because I feel like they're, it's, it's a different perspective on some of these months. When you get like monthly series, um, you tend to, I tend to see like fairly repetitive themes about the month. So as far as I was concerned, this is a really nice monthly series that didn't necessarily have um, very explicit monthly themes that you've seen in a lot of other monthly series. So that was also part of the appeal to me about this particular series. So again, I have all the charts. I haven't stitched any of them. That's not the point sometimes. Um, and again, just to sort of show, um, I don't have a ton of other charts from this particular designer, um, but I did haul out a couple more just because I wanted to show you that there there is variety. I mean, there's clearly certain things that appeal to me that are specific to my aesthetic and, you know, things that appeal to me. Um, and I think you've seen this before because I showed it as part of Stash Acquisitions when I got it. So this is called Hello Spring. I think there were four charts from the spring series. I only have this particular one. Uh, again, this is not a terribly large 70 by 70, so uh, not too terribly bad. Uh, all the called for floss for this is DMC. So there's only eight DMC uh, in this particular chart. And I, of course, am finishing up with a Christmas one. So I don't have Christmas Sampler 1 or Christmas Sampler 2, but I do have their Peace on Earth Sampler. Now, I think I'm going to change the color of the house. I think the called for color in this one, it just didn't necessarily work for me. Um, but everything else about this, uh, I love. Yeah, because this is... it. So I don't know if you can read the words on this. It's just the words to I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Uh, so that's the verse that's on there. Along with the poinsettia, cardinals, reindeer, you know, etc, etc. All things that really appeal to me. Uh, so yeah, again, I, I saw it stitched. Uh, there was something else that came at the same time and I was debating between the two of them. This is This was the winner that came home. Um, again, I just, I think it's a lovely, a lovely sampler. Um, I've made, I've already made my working copy for this one. <laughs> uh, this sampler is a bigger one, of course, so it's 219 wide by 270 high. Uh, the called for threads are gentle arts threads, so, you know, uh, if I start kitting it up now, um, maybe by December of next year, I'll have them all. I don't, anyway. But now that I've hauled it out, I am going like, maybe you should kit that up. Anyway. Okay, now I'm thinking about it. All right, so that is my, uh, a little tour of the cottage garden, cottage garden samplings charts I have in my stash. Um, again, I will put a link to their um, website so you can see there are clearly a lot more charts that they have available. Um, as, as many of you may think that I do buy all of them, I don't buy all of them. So there are more charts than that available. And so um, always good to have a gander through because you just never know what you're going to find that's going to appeal to you. Okay, and with that, a couple of other things. Um, Forgot to mention this last week, Pam and Steph went to Galleria, uh, which occurred a couple of weekends ago in St. Charles, Missouri. One of these days, I would love to go. Would love, 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 love to go. Um, it's on my list of stitching things to do. Um, but again, borders aren't necessarily open to unnecessary travel. I'm not sure I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable getting on a plane just yet, even though I'm vaccinated and 12 other things. That's, I've made that, anyway, whatever. Um, but she did a really fantastic recap of what happened at Galleria, um, the classes that she took, 
because um, you can take classes. You don't have to take the classes. The classes are entirely option optional as to whether or not you want to go. There's shopping, stores come, you know, so Rosewood, uh, another friend of mine was talking about, like the Rose, what she, so she's not a regular viewer of Pam and Steph, but she watched that one. She's like, holy smokes, it was fantastic. Um, and the Rosewood Manor, uh, when they were showing all of the models that were in that one, she's like, oh, that was a bad one for me. It's like, I drooled and loved every part of that. Um, so I am going to put a link to that um, in the notes below. So if you haven't seen that particular episode, I highly, highly recommend it. It's total eye candy. It's a little bit of a window into what happens at Galleria, what was there this particular year. Like I say, it's on my list of things to, uh, my stitching things that I want to accomplish at some point in my lifetime is go to Galleria. Um, so it was great to see what was going on there. It's always great to see what's going on in those rooms and the models that are available and all that kind of stuff. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Um, the other thing that I'm going to say to you, um, you know, Stephanie did a fantastic job. She goes through things a little too quickly for me. <laughs> so what I do, so there's a little settings button when you're watching YouTube. So on mine, it's, uh, down on the bottom right of where the video is and it looks like a little um, like a navigation wheel and when you click on that you have the ability to change the playback speed and so what I find is I just I go in and for that one when she's going through those rooms and seeing all those shop models She's trying to please everybody, and that's great. I like to slow it down. Now, the music gets all totally funky, so I tend to turn the sound off, so I mute it. I slow it down to a speed that's going at a pace I like. And again, you you can choose whichever version of speed you like. For people who think it's not going fast enough, you can also speed it up. I do know some when they watch my videos, they actually speed me up because <laughs> they think I talk too slowly. Hey, how you, you do what works for you. I just feel like I sound like a little bit more of a chipmunk when I get sped up, but do what works for you. Uh, so highly, highly, highly recommend watching that one. It was a really fantastic uh, view into what was happening at Galleria. Fantastic going through all of those rooms and seeing all of the models because again, as I've said on these charts, the cover photos don't necessarily do them justice. Um, Stephanie also talked about that some of their purchases that they made at Galleria were very specifically because they'd seen the models. And, you know, she works at a needle workshop. She'd seen these charts before. It's not like any of, of the ones that she got were new to her. But when she walked in there and she saw the model, like it was a total game changer. And she's like, okay, must have this. And I concur with that. Um, when we talk about my December focus piece, I'm very much going to talk about how that one came home and what pushed me over the edge. But you'll have to wait for December for that story because there's a story there. Um, but it was great and it was total eye candy. And I myself uh, from that video have got things on my wish list of things that I'm contemplating. I haven't pulled the pin on any of them because I did that Michelle from Mama Loves You GB got me on that one. Anyway, you should watch her too. Anyway, so with that, so I will put the link to the Pam and Steph one uh, down below. If you want to, I will put the link to the Mama Loves You GB part number two, which has a clue to one of the things that threw me over the edge that led to my purchase from Europe. Uh, I'll put that link in case you don't know her. Um, like I say, I watch her regularly. She's always a great one to watch as well. Um, and with that, I'm looking over at my thing going, I think I've moved all of the things around. Um, I hope everybody's had a really great week. I hope everybody is staying safe. I hope everybody's staying healthy. I hope you're finding some time to do some stitching. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 
always happy to have the comments down below if you've got questions comments things you'd like me to address happy to have that in the chat below happy to answer those and i look forward to seeing you next week have a really great weekend and from one canadian to all of you who are watching happy thanksgiving <laughs>